Welcome to Slash Forward. This week, we're going to watch some Mind Humpers and start by trying not to lose ourselves in a sea of repressed memories with the film Session 9, which was recently added to Netflix. For tutorials on proper hazardous material cleanup and removal, subscribe to the channel. Let's get to it. We open on Phil and his exhausted partner Gordon talking about home life and having each other's backs. You know, bro goals. They're bidding for a job cleaning an abandoned sanitarium, which has recently been funded for conversion to the town's new government building. They take a look around at the odd sites to get an idea of what will be needed, spending only a little time in what had been called the snake pit, the wing dedicated to the most dangerous abnormals. Even so, it speaks to Gordon. Hello, Gordon. Literally. Overall, she's got good bones and a certain gothic charm, and she'll clean up nice. Desperate for work, Gordy makes an aggressive schedule proposal, securing them the job. On Monday, we meet the crew. Hank is living with Phil's ex, and Mikey is breaking in the new guy, Jeff, who is Gordon's nephew. After getting in a few minutes of solid work, they take their first smoke break, where Mike fills them in on why the sanitarium was closed down. It involved lawsuits related to questionable therapeutic remedies revolving around pulling repressed memories from patients, an abusive procedure that commonly resulted in false accusations. As Jeff hops on the equipment, he also pops a breaker. Since he has a clinically diagnosed fear of the dark, Mike has to do the grunt work. While down there, he manages to find a sweet file room with a jamming box of evidence, the opening of which seems to coincide with other workplace accidents. When they all turn in, Mike hangs back to pour over the evidence, spooking himself over the creepy recordings of the repressed memory therapy of Mary Hobbs. Mary got a china doll from her mommy. Elsewhere, Gordon gets home but gives us the impression that he doesn't actually go inside. The next day, Hank stumbles upon a trail of collector's coins leading to a treasure trove that's both incredibly valuable and just completely packed with asbestos. A double score! They break for lunch, but Mike is distracted from his duties by the reels he found. And afterward, Hank offers up free advice about having an exit plan due to the stress of the job. Gordy makes a call to his possibly estranged wife and witnesses what he interprets as Phil looking to find other work, but is clearly a drug deal. Hank comes back to retrieve his value that night, reaching in deep to pull out an antique silver lobotomy spike with a tuft of hair. Then he goes exploring and is startled to find evidence of an unauthorized occupation, resulting in a confrontation as he turns a corner on his way out. When he doesn't show up for work the next day, Phil calls his ex who says Hank talked about finding his meal ticket and ditching out to Miami for casino school. An obvious fabrication. Sensitive about hanging on to his crew, Gordy questions Phil's rendezvous, culminating in a relatively violent performance review. When they take a breath, Phil laments the changes Gordon has undergone since having a child, something he was not previously interested in. Recognizing the excess stress he must be under, Phil returns to apologize and thank him for the opportunity to potentially die young. Then they both come clean. Gordy admits his stress stems from taking a a pot of boiling water to the balls and reflexively hitting his wife. Now his bottled up guilt is boiling over inside him. Phil pulls a halfsy by saying the young thugs he spoke with were graffiti artists he was running off. He also tells Gordon he got an experienced replacement for Hank so they can finish up the job on time. But who has time for workplace drama? Mike's spending his days listening to tapes, now completely enthralled by Mary's multiple personalities and the salacious memories they're hiding from her for her own protection. That night, Gordy has a dream about his altercation, but with bloodier implications than what we were led to believe. Then he treats his blistered leg and goes to visit the chair that calls out to him. The next Dave Phil tries to have a conversation with Mike about Gordon's unreliability and erratic behavior, but we see that he is listening in, which is very erratic and unreliable, I'd say. He confronts them, but their conversation is interrupted by Jeff who claims to have found Hank chilling in a hallway upstairs. He leaves him to the spot, but there's no Hank here. Not even the moist spot he usually leaves on the ground. Phil's solid line of reasoning is that Hank wouldn't be here if he went to Miami, and that they all heard Wendy say that. But, counterpoint, all they heard was Phil relay that information to them. Then they hear footsteps, and Gordy tries calling the shots, prompting David Caruso to break character momentarily and play himself which is sort of a tensely controlled Nick Cage. Phil and Jeff go one way and Gordy and Mike go another, but Mike splits off to go be with his precious recordings, now on the infamous ninth session, which, if I'm reading this right, may hold some significance. In their pursuits, they all get split up, and then the generator shits the bed, casting Jeff into a personal hell. Shortly thereafter, Phil finds Hank relaxing in the catacombs. Jeff finds a nourishing source of light, and Gordon finds his chair. As Mike gets the generator going, the reel spools up and we finally hear from Simon the personality that contains the darkest memory. He narrates that Mary 
Mary's brother Peter jumped out and scared her, causing her to fall on her porcelain doll, which cut up her chest. Simon then stepped in and told her to cut up Peter real nice to make sure he learns his lesson. And since no one likes being punished, he obviously made her do her parents as well, for good measure. As we learn this, Gordy finds a shrine to his family and is confronted by Phil. Also, Jeff is presumably killed for stealing Oreos. A just punishment. The next day, we see Gordon distressed about what happened to Hank and trying to sort it out with Phil. However, when the new guy shows up, Phil disappears and Gordy puts him to the same slow fate. As Gordy wanders along to his shrine, we see he did all the men and he has an influx of his own repressed memories caused by when he experienced the trauma of killing his family. And as he ponders what he's done, we get a final word from old Simon. I live in the weak and the wounded. I want to take a moment to mention that I have a website where you can support the channel through donations or merch, and also to give a huge thanks to my donors memorialized in the Hall of Headshots. Session 9 is a highly regarded sleeper that hasn't gotten much attention. Hopefully, with its appearance on Netflix during the spooky season, more people will find it. After the first run-through, I feel like it did a pretty good job of connecting everything, but I also feel compelled to watch it again to verify if all the details match up and actually make sense. In our next video, we'll watch a film that, I think, accomplishes this task flawlessly. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to become a part of the channel by subscribing. Thanks for watching.